Welcome back to Inside City Hall. As we reported earlier tonight, President Obama spoke at a fundraiser for gay rights. And with the state Senate still deciding on whether to vote on legalizing same-sex marriage, we wanted to take a look at the legal and political concerns connected to the issue. Joining us to weigh in on that and more are Evan Wolfson, the founder and president of the group Freedom to Marry, and John Avalon, a senior political columnist for Newsweek and The Daily Beast. Thank you both for uh, joining us. Um, uh, Evan, what was going on with the president uh, in the hotel room there? It was a historic speech uh, in a way. Uh, you know, it's the first time he's ever talked to such a group as president. Uh, there was a little bit of not quite heckling, but some, some urging from the wings. What did you make of his, uh, his response to that? Well, I thought what the president said was good and powerful and strong. It's really what he didn't say that I think left a gap in the room, and I think that leaves a gap in what people want to hear from him. What people want to hear from this president is the moral leadership that we look to presidents to provide when questions of inclusion, equality, fundamental freedoms are there. And they are there. They're there right now in New York, where New York is, is debating, as the president noted, whether to end the exclusion of loving and committed same-sex couples from the freedom to marry. You know, the president talked movingly about a young person who had written to him and, and, and asked, asked the president to stand up for his equality. And the president said that young person should have the equality he deserves. But there isn't more than one kind of equality. You're either equal or you aren't. The mm -hmm. president said same-sex couples, that he's always believed that same-sex couples should have the same rights as other Americans. Well, one of the most important rights that Americans share is when they've made a personal commitment in their life to the person they love, they have an equal commitment under the law, and that commitment is called marriage. So when the president talks about all the important steps he's taken, and we celebrate the steps this president has taken, but falls short and goes silent when he talks about those rights, mm. those equality, which are the freedom to marry, it leaves a silence in the room, it leaves a gap, and it's not what people need to hear from this president. Okay, on the other hand, this is a political fundraiser at the beginning yeah. of a presidential re-election season. Is the president just uh, playing his politics? Well, I think it's more than playing politics. Clearly, the president has pivoted to campaign mode. You heard echoes of it a little bit even in last night's Afghanistan speech. This clearly was a speech about, look, we're not going to get there right away, but let's take a long view. I need your help to get in this election, and, and there'll be further gains. I do think, you know, due respect to Evan, I think it's important to appreciate, as you stated, how much this president has done mm -hmm. to advance gay rights in, in just his first three years in office. Uh, he mentioned hate crimes. He mentioned don't ask, ending don't ask, don't tell. These are not small victories. Right. They are not the ultimate victory. Victory, but as he said, there may be you know there, there are disappointments along the way. The point thing is, what direction are you getting, and do you know you're going to get there? And, and I do think the president has provided that leadership, uh, and and you know I think asking him or expecting him to come out in favor of marriage equality in advance of this election is probably a bridge too far, just simply pol politically and practically. But the most amazing thing, as you know, is the way these numbers have changed the last three years. It's extraordinary. Even, even in the last year, Errol, independent voters have gone from 48% support to around 59% nationally. Right. We just in May hit Gallup poll saying a majority of Americans favor marriage equality or freedom to marry. That's an extraordinary sea change. And the president has helped create that environment, I think, and a lot of cor some courageous Republicans in the state Senate and elsewhere who are helping to move that ball forward as well and depolarize the debate just a bit. Well, I, I agree with a lot of what you just said, especially when you talk about the momentum and the momentum not just amongst Democrats, but amongst independents, amongst the center of the country. We now, as you know, have six national polls saying that a majority of Americans support the freedom to marry. And that's why we're at the happy moment where doing the right thing is also doing the right thing politically. This president has very little, if anything, to lose by doing the right thing and actually has a lot to gain by doing the right thing. I think the president made the case that it should be dealt with state by state. And he... he you know, didn't explicitly say so, but clearly looked favored, you know, with a, with a positive eye towards the debate going on in our state. Right. And you take a look at the debate in our state, and it is extraordinary. Take a look at some of the cross tabs on these polls. You know, 59% of Catholic families support same-sex marriage now, 59% of union households. Uh, that, that's an extraordinary shift that's gone on in a relatively short period of time. I think the president's right to say, look, let's deal with it state by state for now. Federalizing this issue and reigniting that culture war in the face of everything, the uphill climb, let's face it, he has to face and reelect, I don't think actually would make sense for him or necessarily even help the cause. 
and, and, and I do think that when you look at partnerships like David Boyce and Ted Olson, uh, you know, the conservative and liberal lawyers working together to overturn Prop 8, as you well know, that's the kind of partnership I think we really need to look to. I don't think it's just on the president's shoulders to provide more leadership. I think it's about state-by-state -state fights and forming creative coalitions between the left and the right to move this ball forward. Well, I completely agree with, again, most of what you just said. Freedom to Marry's Roadmap to Victory talks about the need to win more states, to grow the majority for marriage, to tackle federal discrimination, and we're not looking to the president or any other one person to do it all we all together have to do this and we are doing it but again it was what the president didn't say that that left this gap because the president talked as you just did about the importance of conversations the fact that here in new york we saw republicans as well as democrats republican donors republican business leaders yeah. republican voices and families speaking out calling their senators alongside the democrats we saw business leaders alongside labor unions we saw Hollywood stars and pro athletes alongside couples talking about their kids and the family. And all of that is why we have these extraordinary yeah. polling numbers in New York and why we're seeing this momentum on both sides of the island. Uh, Evan, let me, let me but, ask... but, but the one thing the president left out was he too does have a part in this, not to do the whole thing, but presidents lead, presidents set a tone. Mm -hmm. And having done all the really good, important things he has done, it leaves a gap when he doesn't finish the job. When I when I, I counted up the electoral votes for the five states plus Washington, D.C. that are uh, now f where they've already legalized same-sex marriage, and it came to something like 31 electoral votes, which is well shy of what he's going to need in order to win. I mean, yes. I mean, so polls are one thing, but it is a state-by-state -state battle that he's going into in, in, in 2012. Is, is his mindfulness of that wh perhaps why he's not coming out for? Well, first for of all, let me make clear. Freedom to Marry doesn't endorse candidates. Mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not running for the president. We're not running against the president. We're not mm -hmm. taking sides. We will cheerlead for anybody who steps forward. When Laura Bush or Cindy McCain come out in support of the Freedom to Marry, that's a great thing. When Bob Barr, the Republican congressman who wrote the so-called Defense of Marriage Act, comes out in support of marriage and overturning that law as discriminatory alongside this president, that's a great thing. Mm. So it's not about the parties, and as John rightly said, here in New York, this battle is being engaged in on the support of freedom to marry by both Republicans and Democrats. But, but just to say, the, the, the electoral map is not the only question here, because Americans want to see a president, they want to see candidates who show authenticity, who, who show that they stand for something. And people are willing to vote for someone when they don't necessarily agree on everything that person believes, but they believe this person will stand up and do the right thing. And President Obama's failure to be forthright on the freedom to marry is really the one jarring false note in his dialogue with the American people. I, I appreciate Evan's point. I think we both probably agree that it, were he to be reelected, probably soon after the election, he would say, the country's evolved, I've evolved, and, and come out and support. That, that's just the reality. Let's uh, get ahead of ourselves in New York. This debate is happening in real right. time, and, and the Republican conference is meeting. And what's so fascinating to me is how the debate has changed, even within the Republican, uh, not just conference, but community. People saying, look, let's be more consistent about our beliefs and individual rights. Let's make sure we extend them to social issues as well as economic issues. Look at people like Laura Bush and Barbara Bush and Cindy McCain. And, and, and elected leaders. When John Huntsman announced just the other day, I was struck uh, when he was asked a question about the debate going on here in New York. And he essentially said that, you know, if, if New York made that decision, he'd be fine with it. Uh, that's an extraordinary thing. For a party that has moved decidedly the right on many issues, there is demonstrable progress on this issue. Right. And, 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 and among all demographics, and clearly there's a generational shift going on as well. So that is a hopeful thing. And I, I think the most instructive thing for me just politically is that is that these it's these new coalitions that are creating the new groundwork and if you look at the five states that are in place i mean new york has a greater population than all the five states that are currently in place but it's iowa it's new hampshire it's the first caucus and primary so i wonder the folks who would want to play dog whistle politics are they really going to be able to do so as convincingly in these states knowing that these states have made a decision. Well, Huntsman was the exception, wasn't he? Oh, he, I mean, of course, he's the exception. Republican I don't want to be saying, let's reimpose, oh. don't ask, don't tell. Pa 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 and let's... Pawlenty and Romney, actually, in the debate, I was shocked, and I think many people were as well, covering that debate, when they said, we actually favor um, a federal marriage amendment. I mean, that, that, you know, there's not a lot that requires that George W. Bush 2004 standard to be reimposed, and they willingly chose that, I think, to their discredit. So, yeah, now, Huntsman's an outlier, but I think a courageous and hopeful outlier. And just look at that state, Iowa, New Hampshire. That's not incidental. That should be in the back of a candidate's minds when he campaigns in those states. And, and stepping back from the politics for a moment, I want to go back to something you said, John, which is that this president has done very important things for 
ending exclusion and discrimination against gay people. When this administration, Attorney General Holder and then the President, said that sexual orientation discrimination under the Constitution must be presumed to be unconstitutional and courts need to review discrimination with a skeptical eye, not a rubber stamp, that was a historic and major step forward. And when the President and the Attorney General followed up and said the so-called Defense of Marriage Act, this federal discrimination against married people, is indefensible under the Constitution and we're not going to have the United States defending discriminatory law that was huge. And my point to the president, if I were advising him politically, which clearly I'm not, <laughs> I would be saying to him, having taken those steps and lived up to the Constitution and your mandate as a leader and what people wa who want to see you succeed want you to do, having done these things, the people who are now going to be unhappy, they're not going to be with you anyway. But what you can do is finish the job and excite and energize the people who believe in what you're doing, which, by the way, happily, is now a majority of the American people. What's your sense of whether or not this is enough? That he ticked off all of his various achievements and, as you say, fell short of what some people wanted to hear. Right. Is it enough to, to, to energize that uh, part of his base? It seemed to me there was a noticeable gap in that room, a, a silence in that room, a sort of polite not happiness mm. with where the president left it, artfully trying to indicate where he likely does want to go, but at the same time not going there. And I don't think people were very mm. satisfied what's with your, that, while, while at the same time appreciating all the great things that many of the people in that room love about the president. A tie rope back. How did I, I, I think listening from here, I think it was a strong speech. I think it was a passionate speech. I like the fact that he actually gave a standard stump yes. speech for the first two thirds. I think that affords the community the dignity it deserves. That's right. And then and then pivoted to the issue at hand. I thought he expressed himself in a in a in a way that, that indicated empathy and and deep concern and and I think the reality is just I mean you know we you need to deal with politics as as they are and and you know perfect's never on the menu. Uh, but this president uh, has led his party in a direction which has been unprecedented, and and I think there was I did get a sense of that that support. Sure, would people have liked him to go further? Absolutely, but you know, perfect's not on the menu. This well, is a step in the right direction. And, and you know, and the truth is, look, gay people are no more uniform than any other group of people—Jews, sure. Jews, Irish, or whatever you want to name. And the fact of the is, there are going to be many people who are going to feel exactly what you just said. But there are going to be many others who will feel like they do want to see a president being fully authentic, standing up in a moment of moral leadership. And those people are not just gay people. Those no. are a lot of non-gay people, and as you rightly no, noted, a lot of young people. And these are the people the president needs. Okay, that's going to be the last word. Thank you so much for your, your commentary. We look forward to speaking with you again real soon. Evan Wilson from Freedom to Marry. John Avalon from Newsweek and The Daily Beast. It is time for a break. Still ahead, we're going to ask the chancellor of the state university system about the planned five-year tuition hike for public universities. And later, we'll debate the fallout from the Supreme Court's decision to prevent a class action lawsuit against Walmart. It's coming up in our Sound Off segment. Don't go away. <laughs>